for the next stabilization solution, we're going to look at these liquid methods. We basically have spray starch. So we have two different brands of spray starch in an aerosol can here, and then a pump action stabilizer here in Terial Magic. All are widely available. Mostly you will find these in the laundry section at the supermarket, these spray starches here. These you will find mostly in craft shops as it's specifically a fabric stabilizer for fabric art, quilting, crafting, machine embroidery, and so on and so forth. The application process and the setting process are actually exactly the same for both of these. And they do differ slightly from the instructions that you will find on the cans. So, first things first, I will let you know that I do have one of my matte sheets here. Now, basically, I'm protecting my work surface. I don't necessarily want to get this all over the place. You can use an old um, bin liner or not an old bin liner, that may not be used. You could use a bin liner or a carrier bag, anything you want, really, or even um, a little plastic tray. Generally, what you will do is you will begin by spraying liberally one side of your fabric. Should have got rid of those fibers first. Let it soak for a couple of seconds. And then I generally sort of mop up a little bit of what's there already, turn it over, and then I will spray the other side. I'll then hang this up, maybe on a, over a radiator rail or something like that, but basically let it air dry until it is bone dry. I generally sort of prep these over um, the night before that I'm going to be doing any cutting, and that way I know they'll be dry the next day. So I can just, because I'm using this acetate overlay, I can carefully remove that and show you the next stage, which is basically this. So when they're all dry, you can bring them on. You'll set your iron to match the settings for your fabric. So because I am using um, cotton here, I've set it to number two. And then no steam, just press like you were pressing any other garment. And I generally repeat that for both sides. And that's just setting and pressing the um, starch into the fibers to make sure that this is going to hold its structure as we cut. And you can just batch do these. And you can see this is basically much easier to handle. It, it almost feels like a paper or a card. Let me hold it near the microphone. So you can see, definitely much more um, friendly for dragging a knife blade through in terms of an electronic cutting machine. Anyway, I won't keep doing these forever, otherwise that will bore you. But once you have done that, both those stages, so wetting and soaking, drying, and then pressing, they're ready to cut on your machine. We have our starched piece of fabric here. So reminder, this is what it sort of looks like. It, it acts more like a paper or a cardstock than a fabric. Now there is no backing, so we can put this down either side, whichever works for your project. And generally, you would stick it where you need it to be, and then we do use our brayer to make sure that is thoroughly stuck down. Absolutely needs to be stuck down. No air bubbles, no trapped fibers, just the fabric. Then we will load this into our cutting machine, pushing up against this bar on the left, forward under both rollers, and then load. And then I'm gonna scan a preview so I can see where the circle's going to be that I'm going to cut. Now this is quite an intense pattern, so in order to drop the contrast down and actually see where my cutting design is going to be, 
come into my settings on background, change to the middle button, click OK, and now I can see exactly where my shape is going to be. There we go. And then we're ready to cut. So I just make sure with my quick reference guide, as usual, that I'm going to be cutting thin cotton fabric. This one is for quilt piece because I don't have a backing on it. So it's saying a blade depth of four and a cutting pressure of four. Blade depth we set here. So if it's on anything other than four, we lift up the catch, we take that out, we change the setting, drop it back in and drop the catch. Our pressure we set through the settings menu. If we've come to this screen though, we can always use this tools icon here and it will present the relevant options to us. So cut pressure, four. Okay. I choose cut and then we'll go ahead and cut. Click OK when the machine has finished cutting and unload my mat and then we'll take a look at the result. With my spatula I tease up the edge of the outside part, peel back to reveal the perfectly cut circle. You can still use this because we've got the preview, obviously you can cut extra shapes later on so don't necessarily think you have to get rid of that part. We gently tease up one part of the circle, peel that back, and then we have the circle ready to use in our project. Now we can sew with it as it is, we can paste it onto a mixed media project, doesn't matter what we're going to do with it, we work with it as it is. If after we've finished our project we want this to return to a sort of more fabric-like quality, then we would run the whole thing through the washing machine afterwards and this would wash out the starch.